It's saying it's preparing. Yeah, the internet as a whole has been slower just because so many people are on it. It is so incredibly slow. It's unbelievable. Yeah, because I talked to a guy that builds infrastructures for like, you know, for the, you know, on fiber, everything. And he's like, we're not designed for this. You know, it's like you have a breaker in your house and the breaker says you can have 200 amps. Yeah, we finally are able to go on now. Uh, this is Dr. Kaveh Lahun coming to you guys with another fantastic interview. Wellness Influencers is proud to introduce Dr. Joseph Clarino. He's joining us, so we're going to talk about a whole bunch of topics this morning. I can't wait to get on it. Dr. Joe, welcome. Thank you so much for having me. Super excited to be on here today, especially uh, in the midst of all the things that are going on right now with COVID and, and practices and everything that's happening. Perfect. For our viewers and listeners, uh, let us know what you do, how long you have been doing it, and where do you do with that? Uh, I've been a chiropractor for 22 years uh, with my wife of high school sweetheart. I am number 11. That's a chiropractor in the family. We have number 12 and 13 on the way. Uh, so we are a chiropractic family through and through. It's pretty crazy. Uh, I started going to her uncle when I was a young boy. Uh, I was 16. I was 12 years old. I met my wife at 16. I guess you could say the rest is history. Uh, we have a, a high volume family practice in Sugar Hill, Georgia. It's about 40 minutes north of Atlanta, about 40 minutes north of Life University. And um, uh, we, I practice functional medicine. I am a coach for a national franchise, Align Life, which is a chiropractic franchise. I coach chiropractors there. And uh, I got my hands in a million things and just trying to help serve the profession, serve the people and get out there and, you know, shake the trees and tell our story. And that's just what I do, man. Perfect. This uh, uh, podcast is open our general public. So let's give him some pearls of wisdom. This whole situation of uh, COVID and the uncertain future has caused much stress on everybody. Oh, so. Give us some uh, loads of how you deal with it, what you do, and how how can people process all these stress? It's a great question, Doc. And I think it it, it boils down to, a, a, like, with any relationship, if you have to look at it, you have a relationship that has always starts in the bottom and then it goes up to a triangle. And the base of any relationship or anything is trust. And, and without that foundation, then everything else is a mess. It falls apart. It doesn't want to. It doesn't want to stand on its own two legs, if you will. And so, I think this is exactly that scenario. I think if fear is your control and it's your base, then everything else is going to fall in, and there's no structure around it. And you can't have faith, and you cannot have fear in the same conversation. It's like you can't be sad and you can't be happy at the same time. And when you do, you're crazy, right? So. It's, it just doesn't work. So, uh, you know, I think the first thing is that, you know, you have to learn and it's an exercise. It's a mindset. It's a, it's a controlled thing. It's not like I've been hearing it thrown around the web so much, like it just people talking about it. And I love it. They're talking about it, but it's so easy to easily said than done in the sense of like, well, just don't fear it. Well, it's real. It's outside your door and it, you're scared. So, that fear is real. And then just to shake it off and say, oh, it's no big deal. It's, it, you know, it's such a hard thing for some people to get inside their psychology of their head. And then that gap, they go, I don't know how to exercise it to make so that I actually am less fearful. And we can break that down a little bit if you want. Definitely. Now, in order to control one's mind to, to take in the information that they're real and useful, one needs to start with a mindset. Yes. How do we do that? Well, I think, you know, what's worked for me and even our patients, when we've just been coaching our patients and even the docs that we work with, it's, you know, I think when you get up in the morning, you just gotta, you gotta breathe. You gotta either meditate and slash pray um, and just start finding the power within you, right? Um, uh, if this thing was killing everybody it came in contact with, uh, the sense of fear to me would heighten, right? It would, it, would be, it would be catalyzed by the sense of that, okay, if it comes near me, I'm going to die. 
is there a chance you can die? Yes, it's 0.666 right now. That's the chance you can catch it and die. And so it's very, very low in the, in the realms of, of the outbreak. I watched the news break this morning. They were predicting several hundred people being, uh, being dead from this. And now they're saying that the estimates are way lower as it, as it looks, way lower than they ever thought it would be. So I think the mindset has to start with your morning and how you look at your day and what are you, what are you perceiving? What's your purpose in the day? If you're a mom and you have kids home and you're pulling your hair out and you have so many things going on homeschooling and you just can't leave your home. And it's just, there's a lot of, there's a lot of noise at home right now. Um, you know, just finding purpose in that, man, these kids need you. It's a great time to be with your children that you just wouldn't have that time and leaning into it. You know, I, I, I think so often when we have adversity and these things that we do is we just, our natural human instinct is to run or avoid. And, and I think in this time is when you have to lean in and not lean out. Very nice. And as we know, uh, at times of stress, especially chronic stress, that puts pressure on our body and our immune system, and it actually makes us get sicker easier than if we weren't stressed. Now, how do you deal with stress? How do you, how do you manage stress? Because uh, everybody says, you know, Doc, I don't want to do it, but it gets me. Yeah, all right. <laughs> So I'm going to talk from a personal type A, New Jersey originated, you know, per, stress ball of a person that got me sick 12 years ago, right? So I ended up with a autoimmune disease, a Hashimoto's disease. And so I know the long-term effects of stress. It's, 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 it chopped my knees out. Um, and I'm telling you, as a type A person that just natural has a quick knee jerk to ideas or thoughts or something like I just get excited quickly. I get anxious quickly. I've had to learn how to do that. It's, and it was truly an exercise of the mind. It was, it was a check and slip, check and slip, check and slip. And it's still a check and slip. And I think what happens is, is people being disciplined to themselves and their thoughts is hard at times, right? Because you're so used to a certain knee jerk reaction that that's what you've been raised or taught or done or accepted. And what happens is inside your mind, you have to make a choice in that. And it, even if you slip, you have to then check. And then if you check, what happens is the beauty is, is that instead of slipping and slipping and falling off the cliff, you can slip and check and not fall. And as you tighten it, tighten it, tighten it, it becomes a much better mindset for you to control stress, um, which in the long run, like you said, is the studies are ridiculous of what it does to our bodies. It's amazing that uh, I always tell our practice members and the people who we coach that you have two options. Either you can stress or you can to be, try to be logical. Stressing is very simple, but logical, being logical is as simple, but it just needs practice. It needs practice. So, because so true. As a human, we, we like to, to have to, that fear and fight or flight response, and it generally gives us a quick answer, but not the right one. So uh, since you shared about the, uh, your hypothyroidism and Hashimoto disease, tell us what this stress and, and chronic stress does to our uh, hormones and our body. Oh, this is, this is Pandora right here. <laughs> this is a big one. So uh, it's funny, stress it cr creates something called a cortisol response, which is your fight or flight, right? So, it, you know, my analogy is I come after you with a knife, you're going to get up and run because you're going to get out of there, right? And so, well, the thing that's funny is your body doesn't know the difference between the knife and COVID-19. It doesn't know the difference between that and a bill due in five days. It doesn't know that and the fact that you have three kids at home yelling and screaming and driving you crazy. Like, it doesn't understand the difference. It's still a stress. And as long as that comes into the mind, the mind's going to react. It's going to create this chemical called cortisol. Cortisol in nature has, to, has lots of different effects on the body. But the, the quick version of it is, is that it kind of creates an oxidized process. So the analogy to that is if I put a piece of metal outside and it rained, it would rust. If I left it out there and it didn't rain, it would still rust just because of the humidity, but not as fast. Cortisol is that rain that's on that metal that creates a much higher rust process. What is the rust? Well, the rust is the cells not communicating with themselves and saying, hey, sugar come in, hey, toxins leave. 
hey, uh, thyroid, talk to this hormone, this hormone, talk to that cell. And when there's a miscommunication because the cells are now rusted, if you will, the process starts to happen. And adrenals are, the, are that cortisol fight or flight and adrenals in your thyroid are synergistic glands, like they're cousins, like they hang out. And when one gets pulled, the other one's going to go with it. And so what happens often, I see, I've never seen a thyroid problem be just a thyroid problem. It's always been an underlying, underlying cause of either adrenal or viral or gut or some other thing that's going up. But those are my big three buckets that cause that. And then it pulls down the thyroid. Amazing. It's, it's unbelievable how this whole body we call uh, the machine functions so rapidly and so interconnected, yet a very small miscommunication can, can, can cause catastrophic effects and, and has have long lasting issues in our body. Now, let's talk about our children. Children, mm -hmm. basically, they do what they see. Mom, dad, everybody's stressed. It causes stress on the children's too. How do you deal with your kids? How do you calm them down? Well, you know, I don't have any kids. Uh, we haven't been blessed with children, but we see probably 250, 300 kids a week in our practice. So uh, I learned more about kids in my practice than I'd ever thought I'd know about kids, just being around them, watching them grow up from infants to, you know, now they're bringing their kids in. It's kind of weird. Um, but the thing with kids is, and I, I'm a huge believer, this is one of my favorite sayings, my pastor says this, is that you're not raising children, you're raising adults. And I think that saying has resonated with me and I don't have children, but it has resonated with me to the core because I think so often people want to raise children as their friend and not as their parent. That's the first thing. Again, that starts the base of what goes on. But then from there, it's being, like, especially now you're home with your children, you're trying to teach them and lead them and do that you know, everything you do is going to be a fingerprint or an impression in their brain on what they see, how mom and dad handle this, how, you know, how is it, how was financials getting done? And when you speak to them through an adult's eyes, they get it. It's amazing. And especially as they get a little older and as you, and you teach them that, hey, these are the things that we need to do. This is how we're going to handle this with grace, with poise, without fear. And we're going to handle it smart, but we're going to do it in a way. And when they get into a, a situation at some point in their life, whether it, God forbid it's another virus or whatever happens in their life, adversity, they're going to remember that mechanism that says, check, 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 check. And they're going to have an imprint around that. And I think people don't understand how much of an impression they are putting on their children and how lifelong lasting it really is. It's amazing that uh, our kids are basically like sponges they soak in what we give them and once they display that back to us we go what how did you learn that well it comes <laughs> from us yeah, that's right. now when it comes to trying to keep well and well balanced and keeping our immune system up what are the some of the points that you like to tell your patients and practice members to pay attention to ah uh, great question and so you know, I always try to, I wish I lived in a bubble and I wish I was perfect, but I'm not. And, um, and so I try to reflect that back to my people, you know, um, that it is not a perfect world and I don't live in a bubble. And so you have to navigate through the cones the best you can with what you got, right? So whether that's financial, whether that's your environment around which you live, but at every, at every corner, there are choices and you can navigate. And a few big things are get good sleep breathe, right? Every day, take deep breaths, pray or meditate, read something or hang on someone to someone positive, show me your friends and I'll show you who you are. It's just, right. It's just exactly what that is. Um, and I think, uh, putting good food in your body is critical. Um, organic is best stay away from anything processed, especially now. Um, and then as a chiropractor, I just have the belief that getting adjusted regularly, regularly is a necessity. It's just something we do in our lives. And so, um, and exercise, right. And move the body's a machine. You lose it or, you know, use it or lose it. And, uh, and I think when you start to identify those and I just named six or seven things and it just seems like such a conglomerate of stuff. And 
it's not, it's, it's, you know, you're going to have to eat either way, right? So you choose to eat good or choose to eat bad. It's your choice, right? You, you're going to wake up in the morning, you choose to read something and pray, or you choose, it's a choice. So you can watch the news for an hour, or you can read and do something good. So you know, the analogy I have around this doc is like, you know, you have a new puppy and the, he's eating the shoe, you take away the shoe and you give him a bone. He's going to choose something either way, right? And so it's the choice between the shoe or the bone. It's, it's, it's a choice. And I think when you start analyzing your life and you're saying, look, I'm doing these things anyway, I just have to choose now, what am I taking away? What am I putting in? And how much more beneficial is this that I'm putting in? And do you have to do it all at one time? No, I think that's where people get overwhelmed. They just, they see seven things are like, I'm out. No, just take one thing at a time and do it and be consistent and fill your heart and your head up and then do the next thing and then they do the next thing. And within six months, a year, year and a half, whatever the time frame is, all of a sudden now you've changed your complete outlook on what you're doing and how you see life and the health of you and your family, which is really important. I mean, in, in uh, what we put in our body is a choice. As much as we can put, you know, unhealthy food, we have the same choice of putting healthy food. As right. much as we have choices of stressing ourselves, we have the choices of relaxing. As much as we have choices of running around and being just, just, as you said, the type A, we have the choice to sit back and, and meditate. So you rightly pointed at the food. I like to dive into that whole sugar business thing. Mm -hmm. What sugar does to our systems and our immune system. If you can give us some of your thoughts, that would be awesome. Well, sugar is needed, right? So that's the first thing. So people get confused in the fact that it's that it's just the sugar and it's like so bad and, it, and it's not. It's actually, we need it. It's um, it's when it comes in large amounts that it, that gets to us and can hurt us or kill us even. Um, I, made, I, made that, I made that connection. I went to Africa in a safari about seven years, six, seven years ago. And I'm in the middle of Africa, uh, middle of nowhere. And we're in this Jeep and we're driving out looking for lions and we're stopping and looking at plants and things and different little animals and all kinds of stuff, right? And what I realized was that everything from an ant to an elephant in the kingdom wants sugar. Mm -hmm. Everything wants sugar. And I was like, wow, that's amazing. The issue we have is we're too smart. <laughs> the ant only has so many choices. We have a plethora of choices in the supermarket and what we eat and what we don't eat. And so when it comes to sugar, it is um, this thing that literally is a fast forward button to rusting the cell, like I was saying earlier. Um, it is, uh, once, it, once you have a certain amount of storage of sugar in your blood, it then has to go into storage. And once there's enough storage in your liver, which is like you're just in case I got to run from a knife or whatever, it has that storage, it then is going to go into your fat cells. The problem with that is that those cells are known, depending on what fat cells you're talking about, can produce their own inflammatory markers, they can produce uh, confusion to other hormones, sex hormones. So it becomes this very domino effect of, okay, so you ate a candy bar, okay, but you eat, you eat four candy bars a day, what happens is over time that will rust the cells, confuse the cells and create a whole domino effect of health issues down the road. Down the road. That's just, I could go into that for four hours, doc. It's such a big subject. Dr. Clarino, you're a powerhouse, my friend. I know time of essence and you are a very busy man. So for closing, for our listeners and viewers, uh, drop some uh, points in general, how to deal with the situation now and what to do in order to be less stressed and more focused, yet spend the best time possible with the family. Uh, this is such a good thing. Um, I think giving is getting, right? So I think in times like this, as humans, um, especially not having contact, right? So as humans, we, we need that. We need, we need that interconnection of support and love. And when you can't physically get that, you don't realize the dynamic of every day you go out of your house and all the things that you're doing and connections and people you're talking to, it's, it's pretty amazing until you shut it down and you go, whoa, this is pretty heavy. So how do you do that? So I would give, right? Um, giving is getting. And so I've seen so many amazing things on Facebook where people are out there singing for their neighbors. They're putting hearts in the windows. They're doing, 
they're trading crafts and in, in mailboxes and they're coming up with sort of creative ways to uh, deliver food for elderly. They're, whatever you can do to help somebody else that may not be able to do something for themselves right now, I, to me, I think is the, it's, it's the red thread to this whole thing, man, that makes it, that's going to make it change. And, um, you know, in times of crisis, you see ugly and you see amazing, amazing people do amazing things. And I got to tell you, through this whole thing, I've seen more amazing things than ugly. And I've been really proud of people in general. Like, I think it's, I think it's just hit a reset button. People have had to calm down, reassess, take a look at what's going on and slow down to speed up in their lives because everything is such a craziness. Um, and I think this was God's calling just a little knock to say, maybe we all needed to do this and, and have a, have a, a check. And so that, that's my, uh, my thoughts on this whole thing. Dr. Clarino, I'm so grateful that you could take and shave off some time to talk to me and to our viewers and listeners. I'm grateful. Uh, let us know if anybody wants to reach out and find you where they can do that. Um, they can reach me at uh, www.sugarhillspineandwellness.org or you can reach me via email directly at my initial J, Clarino, C-L-A-R-I-N-O, at align, A-L-I-G-N, life, L-I-F-E dot com. That's J Clarino at alignlife.com or sugarhillspineandwellness.org. Dr. Clarino, thank you. Our listeners and our viewers, this was another fantastic interview brought to you guys by Wellness Influencers. We are here to help, to elevate and help humanity as we can, although little portions at a time, but every little drop counts. Live well, smile often, and try to be the best you can. Thank you, sir. You're amazing.